Hey guys, what's up? Ruben here from the Midnight Garage. You know what I haven't done in a really long time? That's right, an update video. Specifically, an update video about my Toyota Syrah. I think the last time I actually did a proper update video was about a year ago. So I think we're due for a new one. Now this time I'm going to do a few things differently. Usually I just talk for about 20 minutes and tell you all the things I've done. But you know, as you probably know, I recently my Honda Beat got stolen. So this time I'm just going to overlay a couple of, you know, videos of the car. Because I noticed when my Honda Beat was stolen that I really didn't have all that much footage because I didn't properly start the project yet. I mean, I had all kinds of stuff coming in from Japan. But, you know, whatever, that's for another video. Now, I just want to talk about my Toyota Syrah. So the last time you've officially seen this car was, well, almost a year ago. That was when we dropped off all the cars at the second warehouse. Well, not counting the how-to videos I did lately, but whatever. So we dropped off the car at the warehouse. It was stored there for five or six months. And then after that, I had made some space here again to work on the cars. So I brought the car back and then I started working on it. So what was the first thing I did to it? The first thing I did was actually really boring. It was the alternator that you can see hidden right underneath here. So what happened, if you remember the video when I picked it up, you remember that I was stranded on the highway halfway through because the alternator charged only up to 12.02 volts. So that meant that I could start the car, I could drive it, but anything else like turning on the headlights would mean that I ended up with a dead battery somewhere along the highway. And that sucked and that's really dangerous if you actually want to plan to drive the car. So what I did was I took the entire alternator out and then I brought that to a specialty store that rebuilds all the alternators because, well, tr good luck trying to find another Toyota Syrah alternator. I didn't know if I could use like a Starlet one or a Paseo one. I don't know, I just rebuilt that one. It cost me like $150, but at least it was brand new in the end. And that meant that the first major problem was solved and that's that I could actually drive the car whenever I wanted to. Well, since I don't have any actual footage of me, you know, replacing the alternator, I thought it would be fun to show you guys the sick voltage gains I got with the new alternator. So I'm just going to start it and then you should be able to see the voltage on this tiny screen right here. Let's do this. Now this is going to be my second take. I hope you guys don't mind. Hopefully it works this time. Let's see what I'm getting. Oh shit, it's almost falling. Yeah, but it's almost 14 volts. Ah. Now, with the alternator problem solved, that meant that I could actually, you know, drive this car around without worrying if I would arrive or not, which is kind of the main point of the car. But as you probably might remember, this car was still registered on UK license plates and not on the current Dutch ones. So in order to get that fixed, I had to fix three main issues. The first one being the headlights. The second one being those enormous patches of rust that you've probably seen in the previous videos. And the last one was the ride height. The first problem that probably makes a whole lot of sense, this car being a JDM car has a right and drive beam, which is illegal when you drive in a left and drive country because that means that you dazzle all the oncoming traffic and you don't want that. So what I had to do was rebuild the headlights. Now, fortunately for me, this car is the first production car ever to receive projector headlights. And projector headlights, as you can probably see right now, are the easiest headlights to rebuild because the only thing that you need to do is put like a small piece of metal in between there so the entire headlight beam is flat. And once you're done with that, you can just put everything back together and hey presto, you're done. And while I was at it, I don't know if you can see that properly, but I tinted the inner lenses as well to give it like that classic European look. Why? Because I can. The second thing I had to do makes sense as well, get rid of the huge rust patches. Now, the reason why is one, because large rust patches actually decrease the structural integrity of your car if you have a monocoque design like this car. And the second reason is if you got like sharp edges sticking out of your car, you can damage pedestrians if you come too close and you don't want that. You, you probably don't want that, I guess. And 
how I fixed that, that was actually real easy. I didn't really do all that much. I let my friend Dylan do all the work while we made a how-to video out of it. Link is in the description. I'm not going to go into detail that much. You've probably seen it before. And if not, you can watch it there. With the rust patches fixed, I had the next problem because now the car wasn't green anymore. It was green with body filler color and with primer color mixed all together and it looked horrible. So I was thinking about what color to make it. And to be honest, I'm still not quite sure. Uh, on the one hand, I want to have it black or a deep red color because I think that looks really nice with the top. But on the other hand, uh, there's still a possibility that this is the actual car that's used by Gordon Murray to copy the design from for the McLaren doors. And if that's the case, because this is actually one of the first cars that actually was imported to the UK. And if that is the case, then it might just be you know, a piece of history. And in that case, I just want to have the original greenish yellow color. So for now, I'm not sure yet. So what I did for now was the V2 version of the Midnight Garage Illuminati confirmed livery. It's less colorful, but I think it looks a whole lot slicker. You were probably still with me when I said that I had to build, rebuild the headlights. You're probably still with me when I said that I had to fix all the rust patches. But I probably lost you when I said that I had to lower the car to import it in Holland's good. Because why on earth do you have to lower the car to get it registered in a country? It makes no sense, right? Well, that's actually because of these little license plates right here. You see, in Holland we have these really strict laws for license plates. We are all stuck to one size. We can't pick our own numbers and the numbers that you get when you import the cars, those are the numbers you're stuck with forever. If you export the car and import it again, you're gonna get the same numbers. And I could tell you a whole lot about that. I could probably fill like a half an hour video on the license plates here in Holland, but that's really boring, so I'm not going to do that for now. But what you need to know is that if you have a Japanese or an American imported car that you import in Holland, and you specifically mention that you want to have small license plates, you can have them. On one condition that the distance between the top of the license plate tray and the ground is less than 50 centimeters and the total height of this bit right here was 52 centimeters so that meant that I had to lower the car at least two centimeters in order to get these very rare small license plates so that's what I did now with all that done it was just a short trip to the RDW, which is the place where we can import the cars in Holland. They checked everything. They said it was fine for me to have my small license plates. And then I was off again and I could drive this car legally in Holland. So the first thing that I did was something that was actually really boring, but pretty important in my eyes. That was to replace all the filters. I replaced the fuel filter. I replaced the spark plugs. I replaced the oil, all that stuff. So I thought, now I could drive it, but then something happened. And that's the weather in Holland right now, because as you can see from my face, it is really hot right now. It's reaching 40 degrees centigrade, which is like uh, 100 degrees Fahrenheit, I believe. And yeah, I'm not used to these temperatures. And especially if you drive in the car with the glass roofs like that, it's, uh, well, one big greenhouse and it's horrible to drive so i figured you know the car has air conditioning let's just refill it i should be good to go but it turned out that first up it was the r12 air conditioning and you can't just refill that anymore because everything uh, needs to be more environmentally friendly which is you know great but it makes it really hard to <laughs> fill up this system fortunately i found this a company that that uses an american method to refill it which uses like r456 or something which we don't use here in holland but they could do that it happened to be the sap dealer which you've probably seen before my uh, honda acti is there right now and then it turned out that my compressor was broken so yeah now i have to replace my compressor but being a Toyota Syrah, good luck on finding one. You can't find one here, not a brand new one. So I'm probably stuck with rebuilding the one that's currently in it. But I still have to take a look at it. So right now there's still a whole lot of things to do. Like for example, uh, these wheels I got. 
These, by the way, are the real deal bin lids from CRX UK. Anyone who's ever owned a CRX and has been on CRX UK has probably seen some memes about these bin lid wheels. These are the actual ones. Um, I thought these looked really cool on the Tier de Serra because the Tier de Serra is not really a sporty looking car and these wheels aren't really that sporty looking and they look kind of weird, just like the car looks kind of weird, so I think it sort of matches. Then for example this orange indicator light, I wanted to replace that so I bought a new clear one. Still have to do that and a lot of things just, just seem to go wrong with the car but it might be due to the fact that the car had been parked for so long. For example my brake light switch went bad which looks really cool. It looked like I, I walked outside of the shop and I suddenly saw the car bathing in red light and I was like hey what happened? Turns out brake light switch bad so I have to replace that. And for example, the exhaust, it's in horrible shape. It, it's still rather silent, but it's, it's in terrible shape. I, I really need to fix that. And I saw a company in the UK that made the stainless steel one, but I need to make sure that it's silent because like I said, I don't think this is a racer. This is just a more of a boulevard cruiser in my eyes. So I, I just want to keep the car completely silent. And the only thing I want to hear is the sound system. All right, now between everything I've told you in this video, the how-to videos that I've brought up in the last couple of months, like for example the broken brake line and how to flush your brakes yourself and the things that I still need to do, you're pretty much filled in on everything that has happened with this car in the last year. Now, right now, there is still one thing left to do because as I've already told you, it's really hot in Holland. I can't get my airco fixed that quickly. So, fortunately, when I bought the car, I got these plastic panels and these plastic panels are made to go over here. And it's actually really funny because when I bought this car, I got these panels with it and I was like, who buys this? Why? You have like this awesome door, which is easily the coolest feature of the whole car with this epic curved glass. Why on earth would anyone buy a piece of plastic that would cover up the coolest part the door. I mean, what kind of loser would do that? And well, as it turns out, right now I am definitely the loser that would do that. So yeah guys, that's it for today. I hope you guys liked it. Leave a like if you did and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more videos like this and then hopefully we'll see you guys in the next one, which should probably be the Honda Acti, I guess. So yeah. Bye.